Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast. Today is Friday, September 23rd, 2016. I'm Fredicia Liburd. Premier the Honorable Vance Amory says there is going to be a major policy change by his government aimed at revitalizing skills development and entrepreneurship. Speaking at Thursday's consultation on the economy, the Premier said that change will involve expanding the technical vocational education and training Tibet programs in schools as part of the educational reform. Two days ago, we had the launch or we had the unfolding of the new education policy or reform of the education policy. And the emphasis which would be placed in that the new process of education will be that our children will need to be exposed provided there is no physical impediment or any medical impediment that all of our children will be exposed to some practical work at school. Premier Amory, who is the Minister of Education, said for this reason the Tibet aspect of education will be given high priority. We are looking at the expansion of the Charlestown Secondary Vocational Center with grants and loan monies from the CDB. We are looking also at expanding the same program of physical accommodation for the program at the Jinjan Secondary School in the new year to provide for the provision of those skills training programs. We therefore will need a new attitudinal change, attitudinal changes, so that what we are offering in terms of training and education will be readily accepted and seen as being beneficial so that when the opportunities for employment in those areas arise, we do not have always to look outside. As noted by Premier Amory, the Tibet program will have a wide range of disciplines. And we are looking also at auto mechanic, electricity and electronics. Some of it is being taught already, but it will be taken to a new level, having more practical applications. ICT, that is looking at computers, the applications of computers, but we want our people to look more, not just at applications, but look at the design of the websites so that they can become universal, have a universal appeal for the work which they do as entrepreneurs. We will also look at hospitality and culinary arts, air conditioning and refrigeration, agricultural science, food preparation, welding, landscaping, plumbing, beekeeping, cosmetology, accounting, and building construction. And take these opportunities or the training in these areas to the highest level. The Premier also encouraged residents to take advantage of the adult and continuing education program and other training opportunities so that they can be the leaders in Nevis's economic development. Meantime, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Colin Dorr, says even as the island boasts of progress in some key economic indicators, sustainable economic success cannot be achieved without a well-trained and technically competent workforce. He too addressed Thursday's consultation on the economy. Last year we focused heavily on our human resource agenda. In 2017, we must now push the envelope further as we seek to convert skills development into entrepreneurial opportunities. Dua also outlined how economic success may be achieved. We must pursue a structural reform agenda that focuses on economic diversification improve business environment and contingency planning in a manner that will enhance resilience to external shocks and bolster long-term potential growth. Ongoing efforts to improve the business environment and addressing the skill gap will provide an enabling environment for private sector development to help attract foreign investment critical to the financing of 
our economy. Investing in targeted formative projects, including broadening of the CBI program to include business and investment in renewable energy, education, and our health sector. These should improve competitiveness, diversification, and resilience in the economy as well. The NIA's 10th annual consultation on the economy was held under the theme, a revitalization of skills development and entrepreneurship. In a simple yet significant ceremony on Thursday, September 22nd, on the margins of the United Nations General Assembly in New York, St. Kitts and Nevis's Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Mark Brantley and his Ukrainian counterpart signed a mutual visa waiver agreement which would allow citizens of both countries to enter each other's country visa-free for up to 90 days. This agreement forms part of the National Unity Government's ongoing efforts and commitment to improve the international power ranking of the St. Kitts and Nevis's passport. Minister Brantley said he is committed to doing everything he can to make it easier for all citizens of the Federation to be able to travel and do business across the world. After the ceremony, Minister Brantley says he appreciates the willingness of friendly countries such as Ukraine to work with St. Kitts and Nevis as its government expands its international footprint, increases partnership and open pathways for citizens to be more productive at home and empowered to work more seamlessly and actively, knowing they will spare no efforts to facilitate their easier participation on the international scene. Minister Brantley also thanked Dr. Kevin Isaac, High Commissioner in London, for his efforts in negotiating the mutual visa waiver agreement. Earlier this week, Minister Brantley also commended the government of the Maldives, which recently confirmed that citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis do not require visas prior to, the, to entering that country for up to 30 days. This, too, has been hailed by Minister Brantley as an important development for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Minister Brantley, while attending the United Nations General Assembly 71st regular session in New York, is expected to participate in several additional bilateral and multilateral meetings in his capacity as Foreign Affairs Minister. Still to come... Amassing a total of 500 and 17 points is none other the details after this break as a responsible taxpayer you help to finance free health care at all health centers on Nevis thank you for putting country above self this message was brought to you by the Inland Revenue Department Nevis be a responsible citizen Welcome back. The Nevis Public Library this week mounted an exhibition under the theme Men Who Shaped Our Nation, celebrating our national heroes in celebration of the 33rd anniversary of independence in St. Kitts and Nevis. And the idea was to focus on those men, those distinguished men, some of our nation builders, and along with myself, Ms. Lawrence, Ms. Jew, and the other members of staff, we worked on finding current information on our national heroes, books that would have been written about some of them, and the exhibition is here to educate not just the school children, but the general public on the way these men have shaped our nation. Librarian at the Nevis Public Library, Glenda Claxton, speaking about the reason for the exhibition. Shia Lawrence is another librarian at the Nevis Public Library who helped put the exhibition together. These men are men who would have really paved the way for us, who would have championed the cars and brought us from primitive times to the times that we are now having. I think for the past 33 
um, years, we would have come a long way. I know there are some people who would say, um, how can you dear say that we have come a long way? Yes, indeed, we have come a long way. If you are uh, to take a look um, through the Federation, it would only take people like myself and Miss Claxton at the staff here at the Nevis Public Library, along with others out there who are viewing tonight, to really push our countries forward. I do think personality, personally that we have a lot to offer. The exhibition was mounted at the Nevis Public Library for one week during which the members of public got a chance to view it. The St. Thomas's Parish Festival Committee has been getting good reviews following last week's hosting of the Community Festival. Revived after some nine years, the festival featured a packed week of events which culminated over the holiday weekend. Officially launched with a cultural display on the evening of Thursday, September 15th, the festival also featured Sir Simeon Daniel Day honoring the memory of the national hero as part of the activities for Bands God Fest on September 16th. The th that Friday evening also saw the hosting of the STT Fest Calypso competition, which was won by King Suki, who scored 409 points with his performance of the song The Best Place on Nevis. Ground the capital, you're indeed so blessed. Westbury stands out among the rest. Thanks God if you want to day well spend Just up where you find the fishermen Cause the crowd gracefully bringing up the rear These five communities we hold so dear We all stand proud to be a part Of this great parish so close to our heart Say give me Scoring 383 points, the first runner position went to Prince Akido with Gun Factory. Placing second runner up, scoring 363 points, was Invincible with As the World Turns. A Juve jam through the parish on Saturday morning culminated with a beach cool down at Paradise Beach. Patrons headed back to the festival's venue on Sunday night for the committee's hosting of the STT Fest Talented Teen Pageant. That coveted crown was won by beauty number two, Anastasia Kush, who scored 517 points, also capturing the Miss Photogenic and Best Evening Wear Awards. First runner-up was beauty number five, Dakaria Sargent, who scored 506 and a half points. She also won the award for the best performing talent. Soft and juicy, nice and sweet. Come and get your vegetables, cause them cheap. Lord of mercy, St. Thomas's Parish are the bestest. I'll be good in a everything. Fishing, culture, sports, don't even talk about the agriculture. Me I tell her, yo, I would have been mad like she would have. If I not been living at the St. Thomas's Parish, look how good me look. Hey, hey, I hot me, I hot me. I got nothing upon me. Scoring 456 points, beauty number three, Shadia Mitchell, placed second runner-up, also walking away with the Best Parish Promotional Speech and Best Community Cultural Wear Awards. St. Thomas's is a melting pot of historical, agricultural and cultural aspects. Indeed, it boasts of some of the most talented people on Nevis. From the musical prowess of the Hamilton's family in the area of folklore music, to the Calypso Royals, that is King Desanat, King Miko, and King Suki. Don't forget our ever enthusiastic Auntie Tita, our clown's matriarch, Shanika Deming, our Queen Supreme, and our humble and deserving honorables, Joseph Parry and Sir Simeon Daniel. Yes, our natives always leave an indelible mark in any arena. When we touch down, the poor play shall long. The festival wrapped up with a fun day at the Cotton Ground Playfield on Monday. Other activities included a gospel concert and a panel discussion. 
the festival held under the patronage of Elmos Jeffers of Westbury had as its theme Old, Young, East and West United for STT Fest. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredisa Liburd. Thank you for viewing.